Spurgeon here with Revzilla, and today we're going to break down how to clean and maintain your motorcycle leather gear. In this video, we are going to show you how to clean and maintain your leather to make sure it stays looking new, but also to make sure that it functions properly. Now I say functions properly because if you let your leather dry and crack out, it's not gonna protect you the same way it will if it's properly maintained. And the whole reason you're wearing leather while you're riding a motorcycle is you wanna make sure you're safe in the event of a crash. Now, myself, I like to let my leather wear out. I like that nice patina to really have it just kind of worn in that old vintage look to it. However, I don't want it to go so far that it actually damages the leather itself. On my left hand, or on my right hand side rather, this is gonna be my personal Revit Red Hook jacket. And I've noticed that after riding throughout this winter, I've got a lot of salt on it from the Philadelphia roads here in Pennsylvania. And eventually that salt will deteriorate the leather, it'll cause it to dry out. And therefore, if I get into a crash, it could render the leather useless. So I wanna make sure that while I want it to look vintage and worn and broken in, I don't want it to be non functional. So I did some research on how to clean and maintain this while still making sure it keeps that look that I'm going for. So in this video, we're going to break down how to clean and maintain leather pants, leather jackets, and leather track suits to make sure that whether you're the kind of person that wants to clean your gear once a year or once a month, we're going to show you exactly what you need to do. Now on our BSD, which is our beard scale of difficulty, this is going to be a one out of three. This is something that anyone out there at home can tackle, including yourself. Now you'll notice on my left hand side, this is gonna be an array of different cleaners and conditioners. There are a ton of different cleaners and conditioners in the market, and if you're having trouble choosing one that's right for you, reach out to one of our gear geeks, give them a call, shoot them an email, and touch base with them to help figure out what cleaner and conditioner is gonna work best for the jacket that you're rocking when you're out riding your motorcycle. Now in this video, we're gonna break it down into three separate steps. We're gonna talk about interior, exterior, and then also conditioning your jacket. When I was preparing for this, I did some research by reaching out to the folks at Anthony's Leather Works in Southern California to see what they would recommend. Now I went to Anthony's because that's who the big players recommend. And that's also who managed to fix one of my personal leather jackets, an old RS2, when I needed a new zipper. These guys are the authority on leather here in the States. After talking to them, we decided that we're gonna start with the interior and then we're gonna work our way through the rest of this. Now for most jackets out there that are modern, they're gonna come with an antimicrobial liner. It's gonna to help to wick sweat away. And if you're a track rider, in some cases, your liner is removable so you can simply pull it out and throw it into a washing machine. For those of you out there that just need to air it out a little bit, that's gonna be the first step. In most cases, if you have that antimicrobial liner, you can simply put your jacket on a hanger set it outside, and just let it breathe for a few hours. That'll do the trick in most cases. Now, if you're a little bit more of a sweater and you need to get some of that funk out of there, if you just wanna go with the easy approach, a little Febreze will help to mask the odors. Now, our Febreze went with Gain, and it smells nice. So, that would be the step if you just need to quickly mask some of those odors that might be lingering in your jacket after a longer ride. For those of you out there that are pouring a ton of sweat into your gear and you really have an odor problem going on, all the major brands, Alpine Stars, Dionese, Revit, et cetera, they're gonna recommend going with a desalter. Now, when you sweat, you pour out a ton of salt from your body into your leather gear. That sweat turns to odor, it turns to mold. So what you wanna do is by using a desalter, it helps to break up the odor, break up the mold, and remove that smell. So what you want to start with is you want to take all the armor out of your jacket, your pants, or your tracksuit. This is going to allow you to turn the gear completely inside out with ease. Once you have the gear turned inside out, you're going to take the desalter and you're going to apply a liberal amount to the inside liner of the jacket and then you're going to hang it up and you're going to let it dry. You want to make sure that that jacket is completely dry before you turn it right side in and put your armor back inside of it. Once you've completed that process, the inside smells nice, it's time to move on to the exterior. For most of you riders out there, the exterior part of your leather gear, your leather jacket, pants, tracksuit, that's really the part that's gonna collect the most grime and it's probably the part that you're most concerned with making sure stays clean. With the leather jackets that you're gonna see or the leather pants you're gonna see or the tracksuits, most of them are gonna be treated in a way where they don't absorb stains readily. However, you wanna make sure when you're choosing a cleaner, you're not gonna use something that could risk damaging the actual color, patina, or shell of that jacket. So you wanna stay away from anything that's gonna include silicones or waxes because that can dry out the leather. You also wanna make sure you stay away from animal oil products. I used to always clean my jackets with a mink oil paste. 
after talking to Anthony's, realized that's a big no-no. Using an animal byproduct can actually cause the leather to discolor, and in most cases, you don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that you're choosing a cleaner that is appropriate for leather use. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of cleaners out there in the market, and if you're having a, tr if you're having a struggle or a trouble figuring out which one to use, just reach out to one of our gear geeks, and they'll steer you in the right direction for the leather that you're cleaning. Regardless of which cleaner you choose, you want to make sure that you always follow the instructions listed on the bottle, and you always want to take note of the instructions listed in the actual garment itself. Whether you're doing a jacket, pants, or a tracksuit, just take note of what the actual cleaning instructions say on the garment as well as the cleaner that you're going to use. In most cases, you want to use a soft cotton terry cloth rag. You're going to apply the cleaner to the rag, not to the jacket itself, because you don't want to put all that excess cleaner on the jacket where it can be absorbed. And then once it's on the rag, you're just going to use small circular motions, start at the front, and work yourself through the body of the jacket. As you're doing this, you're going to notice that dirt will be absorbed into that terry cloth rag. You can use some warm water, rinse that out, and make sure the rag stays nice and clean. A little bit of warm water, you don't have to worry about it damaging the jacket. Once you're done with the body, you can work with yourself onto the arms, then turn it around. Usually the back of a jacket isn't going to be as dirty as the front because you're not getting splattered with all the bugs in the back, but you still want to make sure you go through the process of cleaning the back as well. When you're finished, you're going to have a jacket that looks nice and clean, but it is going to be a little bit wet. You're going to want to make sure you let the jacket dry thoroughly before moving on to the next step, which is conditioning. So in some cases, it takes up to 24 hours before this jacket's going to dry out, so I've got some time to kill. Luckily, I've got a few beers handy. I'm going to go find Lemmy. We're going to have some fun. Now, Lemmy and I have had a chance to enjoy a couple of cold beers, and this jacket has had a chance to dry. So I am left with a nice, clean, dry jacket, and now it's time for you to move on to the next phase, which is conditioning. When you're conditioning leather, what you're doing is you're giving all those essential oils back to the jacket itself, or the pants, or the tracksuit, whatever it is that you're out there working on right now. You don't want to over-condition. Over-conditioning can lead to discoloration, and it can clog the pores, which can prematurely damage the leather. Rule of thumb, condition your gear about once a year. If you're aggressively using it, using it every single day, you might want to do it twice a year, but again, rule of thumb, about once a year for conditioning the leather. Now, as I mentioned earlier with the cleaning products, with the conditioning products, there's a slew of different options out there for you as well. Once you choose one, you're going to want to make sure you follow the instructions on your particular conditioner explicitly. With the conditioner that I've chosen, it says to apply a liberal amount to a damp sponge, and then I'm going to work it into a clean leather jacket. I've got a clean leather jacket here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a liberal amount to a sponge, and the same way I started with the body, I'm going to do the same thing with the jacket on my right-hand side. I'm going to work this through the body, making sure to stop, rinse out the sponge with warm water the same way I did with the terry cloth rag, and then reapplying back to the jacket. Once I finish the body, I'm going to work my way down the arms, turn the jacket around, and work down the back. You never want to condition just a certain section of a garment. Make sure you complete the process, giving an even amount of conditioner throughout the entire piece. Now, once you're done conditioning it, set it aside in a nice ventilated space, let it dry, and once it's dry, you are ready to ride. You can take your nice clean jacket, tracksuit pants, go out and get them all dirty again. But wait a second, like we said in the beginning of this, you're only gonna wanna do this once, maybe twice a year. So what are you gonna do for the rest of the time? This is where we're gonna talk about continued care very briefly. For continued care, you don't need to re-clean your entire jacket, pants, or tracksuit every time. You just need to spot clean, and for that, recommend baby wipes. If it's good enough for a baby's ass, it's good enough for me. That is my life motto and I stick to it. So keep a set of these in the top of your toolbox and when you get home from a ride, pull one out and give a quick spot check to any of the leather you're wearing and you'll keep it nice and clean for the one time a year that you actually have to give a big detailed cleaning and conditioning of your leather gear. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, this entire process is no more than a one out of three on our BSD, our beard scale of difficulty. So if you've been following along, you probably have some really nice, clean, shiny leathers hanging in your closet. If you have additional questions on how to clean or maintain your gear, maybe you want to learn how to wrench in some projects hanging out in your garage, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube and keep up with all the how-to videos that we have rolling out here at RevZilla.com. If you have questions that we haven't hit on this video, always remember you can reach out to one of our gear geeks directly by phone, 877-792-9455, or simply shoot us an email, cs at RevZilla.com. Thank you for joining us for this look on how to clean and maintain your leather gear. I'm Spurge. 
enjoy the ride.